In this tutorial, we are going to explore BricksCAD's dimensioning tools. On my screen, I have a simple drawing, and before I apply dimensions, I have already created a separate layer for the dimensions. We are going to be dimensioning this geometry using the default settings. You will find the dimensioning tools in the drawing panel. We'll create a linear dimension first, I'll launch the command, and then I'll grab the endpoints of each side of the line. It's very important when you're creating dimensions to use object snaps. That's the only way to ensure that your dimensions are accurate. A linear dimension will give us the vertical and horizontal distance between our selected points. So if I pull up, you can see the horizontal measurement, and if I pull to the right, we can see the vertical one. If you select the dimension, you will find on the right hand side some properties that you can adjust like the arrow size and the text size. If we wanted to dimension the overall width of this part, we could launch the linear tool again and grab both endpoints of this part. Now let's try another tool, I'll open the dimensioning menu again and this time we are going to choose the aligned dimension. If I select the same two endpoints we started with and pull the dimension out, you can see that the measurement is parallel to this line, thus it is giving us the true measurement of that geometry. Now I'm going to create another dimension, um, so I'm going back to the menu and I select the angular dimension. This time to create an angular dimension we can select one line and then the other to pull out the measurement and click to place it. Now I'm selecting some dimensions to change the arrow size and text size again. I'm going to create another angular dimension, so let's select this line and this line. Notice that if we stay inside of the angle, BricksCAD will dimension that, and if I move to the outside, BricksCAD will dimension the opposite angle, and if I move my cursor up or down, I can also dimension the supplementary angles. Now let's dimension the circle in the drawing. I'll go back to the menu and I select diameter. This time I will select the circle and pull the leader out and place it over the dimension. For the radius command, it's the same workflow as the diameter dimension, so I'll pull the dimension out and place it. Now, how do we know if we should use the diameter or radius dimension? Well, a good rule is if you're dimensioning a closed circle, you will probably want to use diameter, and if you're dimensioning an arc, you probably want to use radius. These are some basic commands you can use when dimensioning your drawing. Next, we are going to dimension a, a more complex drawing as a practical example. We will try to document this geometry. So this drawing is a small mechanical part. And the first thing we want to do is dimension the overall height by using the linear option. To identify the center of this circle, I'll press the spacebar to repeat the command and select the same endpoint and the center of the circle, pull my dimension out over the left hand side. Let's dimension the overall width of the part. Um, we are going to use the linear tool again, so this time I'm going to grab the most left endpoint and come over and you might think that we are going to grab the midpoint of the quadrant here but usually we don't dimension to a quadrant so i'm going to grab the center of the circle to ensure the contractor knows the overall length of this part let's dimension the radius as well i'll select the radius option and click on this arc We have defined the overall width of the part. Now let's identify some additional parts using the continuous tool. By clicking different endpoints of the drawing, you will dimension all the different parts of the drawing. 
Here we are just going to select the dimensions to change arrow size and text size. Another good rule of thumb when dimensioning drawings is to dimension as least as possible. So here we can delete this part because we know the overall width and all the other dimensions. So we can delete that one. To finish off the horizontal measurements, I'm going to use the quad cursor to use the linear tool again, grab both endpoints that I want to measure and place it. I'm relaunching the linear measuring tool again and grabbing the center of the circle and the endpoint. Now the measurement is now on the edge of my drawing. If I want the measurement on the other side, I will have to relaunch the command again and this time select the endpoint first and then the center of the circle to have the dimension on the other side. In this case, it won't matter because I'm changing the dimensions in another text size, so it will be in the middle anyway. I'd like to identify this angle so I will grab the angular tool and click both lines and instead of pulling my angle out on top of the other dimension, I'm going to dimension the supplementary angle instead. Now in the same way, with the same command, we are going to measure the upper part of the element. To finish off, we are going to measure the radius of the fillet edge which is 7.5 and lastly we are going to measure the diameter of the circles of the drawing if you can see the two circles on the right side are the same so if you double click the dimension you can change the text for example to two holes here you can also change some properties like text size font and color and at this point i think we have fully documented this drawing of a mechanical part thank you for watching